Hello, this is Destiny with PLR Pure Light Radio. And this is Kali Das. Hello, everybody. So, on our last podcast, we had talked a little bit about mantras. And I was just wondering if you could go into mantras in a little more depth. You know, maybe the history, um, what they are, what they're for, and how you can incorporate it in your everyday life. Oh, nice. That's a very nice question. I'd love to. So, mantras mm. are basically an ancient form of mind control. And it's not oh, a wow. mind control in the negative <laughs> okay. way, but it's self-mind control. It's I like control mind control, your, though. Okay, well, I mean, you know, not in the freaky okay, way. Well. Some people, most people don't like mind control. Okay, sorry. Uh, to be mind control. But they want to have their own, they want to master their mind. I love to control my kids. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So, I mean, that could be a whole power struggle and another issue that we could talk about another day. But I'm going to go ahead and stay on topic with the okay. uh, mantras. So, mantras are ancient, and, and the root word for mantra is man, nas, which means mind, and tra means instrument. So it's instrument of the mind, or the mi a tool for the mind. Oh, right? I like that. Yeah. That sounds pretty. Yeah. And basically, what you can do with that is gain mastery over your mind, and most people do not have their minds under control, they have their minds controlling them. So, you know, <laughs> they they want to sit still and think about something or focus on, you know, getting their work done or schoolwork done or project or just sit and think about all the things they have to do in the day. And, you know, their mind wanders to, I want ice cream <laughs> or I want to do this or, oh, there's other things I forgot about that, you know, but it's, it has nothing to do with what they're thinking of. So basically their mind controls them like a monkey jumping from tree to tree. It wants to just go to this branch to this branch and you can't really control it. So the mantra helps you do that. It helps you get control over your mind. Mm. Okay. And um, basically a mantra is something that is repeating over and over again. Mm -hmm. in a, and it creates a circular shape or, or thought form because our thoughts are circular, but we don't know which track to be on, which circle to be on. And it's also for good for people that don't like waiting, you know, like when you're waiting in line and your your thoughts are going here and there and you're like, oh, man, this is taking forever. You can also repeat a mantra in that time. So it raises your vibration and, and it gets your mind off of the boring thing in front of you. Yeah. You know, I, you know, can I just tell you something? Well, I, yeah, I don't mean to go off too far, but I hate when I'm waiting in line, like at Starbucks, okay? And then the person in front of you does not know what to order. And they're looking at the board and they're asking the person that works there all these questions about the drinks. And I just hate that. And they take five minutes and then I go up there and I just take 10 seconds. It drives me bananas. <laughs> Well, that's exactly it. I guess you would be um, a successful candidate for this um, mantra tool because you can you can get your mind off of thinking, oh, my God, you know, I only have something to do for five seconds and they're taking forever and that's annoying you. Instead of focusing on that, which is wrong focus, you could have the right focus by repeating a mantra in your head. But and don't you just think that's rude? I, I think well, they're rude. They're wasting other rude. people's time. If I'm in a hurry and I have to make an appointment or I have to be somewhere... You know, I only want to go to Starbucks for, you know, a few minutes. I don't want to be there for a half hour. Right. It's, it's very rude and inconsiderate of them, but people are, <laughs> are often rude <laughs> and inconsiderate. You. I'm glad you agree with well, me. Well, I validate that, okay, yeah. So I, I, that is Anybody true. out there, please know what you want to order before <laughs> it's your turn. She's trying to change the wor world right I now. I am. Okay. I am. So, <laughs> so, but with that said, with people being often rude and inconsiderate, you, you don't have control over that, but what Ugh. you but what you do have control. I know you could maybe train your mind, maybe with the mantras one day to do that. <laughs> but until you master your mind at that level, you can at least get control over your own thoughts, which is the beginning of doing that. So the beginning of tr controlling others would be controlling yourself first. <laughs> but so, but that gives the power back to you, instead of having the person have power over you and make you feel irritated and agitated and upset and become impatient. You can actually be in that Zen state and choose to be in that Zen state in that moment. So it gives you control over your experience instead of someone else dictating it for you. 
Okay, but I still feel like they're in control because now they're making me late for my appointment. So I have <laughs> one, what, one or two choices here. I can either leave and not get a coffee, right, uh-huh. and make my appointment on time, uh-huh. or wait for them and be late. So, I mean, and get my coffee and then be late. True, you do have those two so, options. But the third option is to, if you choose to stay instead of walk away, you can you can control your experience within those moments instead of instead of worrying about how you're going to be late, which is kind of like utilizing the karma yoga from last session, the mm-hmm. last you know podcast that we did. So from utilizing that state of non-attachment, I did mention the mantras because of that. And so getting your mind into the mantras will get your mind off of, you know, being late and and this rude person in front of you. So I was just wondering, do you think that is there a way that I can use my mind to <laughs> make that person do what I want? In a way you could. Because you could use the art of visualization to visualize them leaving faster and, and you being in line and really? you arriving on I time. I was just joking. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's some merit to it. It's a funny <laughs> joke. But you could use visualization and then get this. Yeah. You could use the mantra to strengthen the visualization because that's another tool of the mantra is or the effect of the mantra is what it's good for is it's good for not only getting control of your thoughts, but using it to stay in the right focus to manifest what you want. Some people call it the law of attraction. Mm. You know, other people you just you call it creative visualization with an intention behind it. But it's all the same thing. So using a mantra, you could insert here, basically. So what you could insert, I mean, there's ancient mantras that have a uh, meaning to them. Can I meaning. influence somebody's choice of drink? So let's say they're going, hmm, I don't know what I want, and well, oh, what's in this, and then and that. So can I think in my head like cafe mocha, cafe mocha, cafe mocha, and then they'll go like, oh, I want a cafe mocha. You could if they're open and they don't. <laughs> if they're in the state of not knowing what they want, <laughs> and they would have to be inclined to get that drink, and you okay. could influence them that way. But also, there is such thing as free will. So you could, you could. Yeah. The better way to do it is to just get them to make a decision faster, or choose something. Well, that's what I mean. Well, just, I mean, in oh, a way, okay. you could do that. You could, do, you could, you could maybe feel out what they wanted to drink or that they would like, and then if you can imagine that <laughs> in your head, and then just get them to. Pick I'm just it. having. I'm just helping them make a decision. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a way. You Whether they it. like it or not, I don't care. <laughs> I just want them to get out of my way. <laughs> well, th- just add another thing on there, um, you know, that they will enjoy what they're trying as well or something, if Ooh, you okay. care. But um, if you don't care, yeah, you can keep it simple. They look like a chocolate person to me. The cho- yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can use that. <laughs> so, so there's ancient mantras and there's modern ones. And what do I mean by that? is an ancient mantra is a mantra that well is ancient and it has a spiritual ancient vibration to it Mm. and that will raise your vibration and 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 if you say it over and over again it will embed into your consciousness and will be inside of your aura and so in your imprint you'll be imprinted with that vibration from the ancient what do you mean raise your vibration so what's this vibration you speak of okay so people vibrate at different rates And and yeah. and let's just put it this way. When you're in a state of depression or sadness, you're at a very yeah. low vibe, a very vo- low vibration. You're not really vibrant and healthy like people would say in a term like, "Oh, you look very vibrant and healthy today and happy." So you're you're in a depressed low vibrational state. But then later, let's say you get angry about something. You're like, "I'm upset." about my job and how people have treated me and how people are treated in the world. And just because I'm depressed, you know, now, now I'm not anymore because now I'm angry. Now you just upped your vibration to anger. Okay, that's a level of frequency, your vibration. And then let's say, you know, you did some things in the world and you changed some things and now you feel good about yourself and you feel good about what you created in the world. And from addressing those things, now you're in a state of joy. And now you're vibrating even higher. And in a state of joy, you're not only happy, but you're healthy because the, the faster your cells vibrate without like resistance in between vibrations, basically, or impurities or things that cause friction, mm-hmm. you're healthy. Okay. So does it mean that 
when I use my vibrator and then I have to have it at the highest level, does that mean that? Um, I is that think bad? That, that might mean you're I'm just in a low vibration. Possibly, so then you need to raise I need to a higher one. It's possible, yeah. I mean, if you look at it that way, or it could be like um, you're desensitized <laughs> and you need something stronger. Or <laughs> well, that's probably why faster. I don't even use them anymore because I can't find one that that vibrates. works for you anymore. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know. Well, yeah. That's that's one way to look at it. Well, I probably just need a boyfriend. Y- maybe you need some love. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just need. Maybe you c- if you don't have a dog already, maybe you should get a dog. Oh, you do have dogs. So I do have doggies. Well, you have dogs. I don't have sex with them, though. No. Okay, ma- you need a boyfriend. It sounds like you need a boyfriend. Yeah. So, okay, back to the mantra topic. Well, maybe if I was on a higher bri- vibration, I would get one. <laughs> or maybe you would get a higher vibe boyfriend, because you can get a boyfriend <laughs> at a low vibe, but they were going to be depressed or in the same vibration oh, that yeah, you are into. Yeah. Or it's going to be you know a codependent relationship, a relationship that's like, I'm up here and you're down there, and I'm going to help you, and and... And they're going to try to be your savior, and it's not going to work because then you're going to depend on them for your vibration. And then when they're upset with you or something happens or they're not there, you're not in the state anymore. So you become dependent on it like a drug. So that's how relationships become drugs too, chemical Mm. dependency, because you're depending on them for a certain emotional state or vibration. Mm. That's what emotional states are, are vibrations, uh, vibrational states, because emotion is just energy emotion. That's what it is. So. Sounds really complicated. Not really. No? It's just energy and motion, and everything's vibrating. Like Einstein said that everything is vibration. It's not a myth or speculation. It's fact. It's scientific fact. So it's it's mm-hmm. a fact that your ice melts into water, and that's a different vibrational state. When, when ice is in a certain state, it's slower. And when it's in water, it's higher. And then when it's in steam, it's highest. Mm. So that's where transmutation and alchemy comes from. And that's where the spiritual science of it, the spiritual aspect of that gets changed, where we change our impurities into gold, our lead into gold. So our negative into positive, our low vibes into high vibes, the bad things have been done to us, we convert it into empathy and joy and higher things like that. That's transmutation or alchemy. So it's not really that hard to understand when you think about it that way, like the ice and the water. And in your daily life, are you going to be the ice block? Are you going to be the blockhead <laughs> walking around that's not open? Are you going to be flowing the ice queen, the, the ice queen right? <laughs> and going to be in your box and shut off from everybody? Are you going to be flowing with life like water? Are you going to be floating through it like ethereal, like the the steam? I mean, it all depends on your vibration. Oh wow! Okay. And that show that also changes your experience because they say, the metaphysical people say. When you change the things you, how you, okay, when you change the way you look at things, Uh the things you look at change because all of life is perception. Okay. So is that kind of like the law of attraction? It ties into the law of attraction because the law of attraction is what you think about, you bring about. So if you're thinking negative things constantly and worrying about, I can't pay the bills, or I don't know if I'm going to get in a car accident today because there was one on the news. Y- you're bringing that to your doorstep. And according to how powerful your thoughts are and what vibration you're in, because fear is a pretty powerful one too in a negative way usually, um, you're harnessing and, and bringing negativity into your life through the law of attraction. So by taking control of your mind with a mantra, Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're choosing your destiny. You're choosing what you experience and how you do. So even if you have negative karma that needs to come to you, mm-hmm. okay, if, you, if you're a firm believer in cause and effect, which is what karma is, which I'm a scientific man myself, okay, um, when you have the negative things come into your life, you can lift them in a positive way by your perception, by how you perceive it. One person can be totally poor, and totally happy and someone could be another person could be completely rich and completely poor spiritually meaning that they're sad and depressed and don't know what to do with their life Mm -hmm. so it just goes to show your perception of the same experience that someone else is happening having changes the way you experience it yeah I have a problem with that go ahead okay because in my own life I have been happy and just go lucky, la, 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 you know, skipping through life. And then all of a sudden something bad happens to me. 
Did I bring that on? No, I wasn't thinking anything negative. And then the opposite. Okay, okay, here's the other thing. Why does it seem like it's easier for negative things to happen to you than positive things? Meaning that, okay, you think about one negative thing, now all of a sudden, all these negative things happen to you. So why doesn't it happen with positive? So you think of positive things, it doesn't always be like, or it doesn't always mean that positive things now are going to happen to you. Right. No, you're completely right. And the answer to that is that the law of attraction is based, the power of law of attraction is based on your beliefs. And it's not your surface beliefs, it's your deep-seated beliefs. Like, so you may say to yourself, I do deserve better. I do deserve to be treated this way, right? But you're just I trying... I never feel like that. Okay, well, that's a problem. Then. <laughs> but, but what it is, is it's deep down, whatever your deep-seated fears or beliefs are. And the way that you find out what your deep-seated beliefs are, mm -hmm. are going back to your childhood and seeing what happened to me. Because in your childhood... That's what everybody says. Is that really true? It is true because most people... Then I'm doomed. No, you're not doomed. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're not doomed. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just that every almost everybody has been traumatized in some way and some worse than others. Right. And the deeper the trauma, the deeper the, the, the beliefs become. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. And everything's relative too, right? It's all relative. So. So, so you it's know. like, yeah, and and it's what's a bad experience for one person, maybe to somebody else, it wouldn't even phase them. Right, and and it could be dependent on how sensitive you are, because if you're a sensitive right. person, you know, having something bad or violent happen to you or someone around you, you could feel so much because you're so sem sensitive. And another person says, ah, oh, that was nothing. It was, you know, no big deal. And there's two ways to react to it as well. One person can become highly defensive and untrusting of everybody. Mm -hmm. And then another person could be like, I'm, you know, a gun, a gun was held to my head and nothing happened. So I'm Superman now because, wow. and I can take on the world like nobody can phase me, which is also a danger, dangerous way of thinking. Both mm -hmm. are extreme, so it's not like you should go out in the world and think, oh my god, everybody's out to get me, and then you shouldn't be in the world thinking, I'm Superman, and I can do anything and, and say whatever I want, which is not a good place to be either. They're both imbalances that come from the trauma. Okay, so let's say you're somebody and you were traumatized as a child and stuff like that. So how does the, the mantras fit into that? Because now it sounds like even if you say a mantra, it's not going to help you. Well, this is, this is the thing, is you are most highly suggestible when you're a child. So, of course, it would be great to go in and do the inner child work, okay? But I'm, I'm talking about mantras as a tool, mm. and, and as a tool for the mind, and it's in training. It's like brainwave entrainment or something that you've repeated over and over again, and advertisers know this very well, that if they say, you're thirsty, you need a Coke and a subliminal message, or, or even consciously, you're going to want to go get a Coke and you think about that, and mm. it makes you thirsty, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a physiological effect to what These you think. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Yeah, see, exactly. So, so <laughs> this is... That was from Seinfeld. Never, okay, never mind. Okay. Well, sorry. So maybe they know about the the you know subliminal suggestions, but they're all over the TV. They're all over every. Well, that's why they call it television programming because they're telling lies to your vision. They're they're mm. telling you. They're selling you on things like you need this car. You need this thing to be happy. If you do this, you'll feel good. So, but that's programming. So, but 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 if you go into the programming th using the mantras, taking control of your own programming, if you imprint it enough the mind will eventually believe it. At first, your deep-seated beliefs will reject it and say, no, that's not true. And you might even feel silly if you say, I am happy and abundant, and I believe that I deserve to have abundance in my life because I'm connected to the infinite source of supply this day. That's your mantra. And you say it over and over again, you're, that suggestion, self-hypnosis to yourself, over and over and over again. At first, you're gonna be like, no, I'm not, and I don't feel healthy, and I, I don't feel abundant because all these things, I have no money, I have this, you know, this is the truth, this is the reality, I don't want to say this thing and, and, I, and I'm lying to myself. Mm -hmm. But if you say it over and over and over again, which I have done and I've tested it out, I remember doing it, saying this, okay, I'm connected with my infinite source of supply this day and I expect good things to come to my life because I am basically, okay? And I've said this over and over and again. And at first I really didn't believe it. I was like, no, I'm not, but I'm just gonna keep saying it. I did the mechanics and then I was, uh, lifting weights at the gym and in the middle of a rep which I was not thinking anything it came to me on its own from my subconscious just like all other thoughts come from the subconscious it was in there it got embedded and I believed it then 
because I just thought my, I'm connected to my infinite source of supply this day. And it just came to me. And at that point, I said, this stuff really works. So that's a mantra? That's a mantra. What is it? Again. So I'm, I'm con- I expect abundance in I my ex- life. I expect abundance in my life. Because I'm connected to the infinite source of supply this day. Because I'm connected to the infinite source of, source supply, of supply this day. This day. So I if you say abundance. that... yeah. And then what, but what will happen? Like, do I have to think of something specific? No, you just do that. I was doing that constantly and it's subconscious. The subconscious understands from that little small repetition because it likes things short and fast. And when you do it like that Mm -hmm. over and over and over again, repeat, you're speaking the subconscious language, which is circular, infinite. Okay. And when you do that, it says, oh, okay, sure. And then it comes, and and why I like it general like that is because it leaves the door open for whatever abundance. That so it could be in. money, let's say, Af- or maybe yes, it could be um, a promotion at work. Abundance. It means more than enough in every aspect of oh. your life. Abundance is emotional abundance. Am- abundance is health. Abundance and health, like organic foods or natural foods, all, all of a sudden you have a feeling to go and get those and cook them. And then you you have a job that opens up or, or you just have a feeling, you know what, I want to start my own business or I want to be an entrepreneur, which that's what happened to me. I decided, you know what, I want to start a vending machine business. And I was actually working at Menchie's at the time as a frosty maker. And so I'm making these ice creams or actually frozen yogurts. And I'm thinking, Menchies. Yeah, they're really good. That yeah. was the best part of that job is I got to have. Do you have the recipe? I, you need these thousand dollar machines to make the type of froyo. Oh, really? Yeah, they're really oh. expensive, but I mean, they are so worth it because they're so good, and the fruit that they use and everything's all fresh. And I liked them, mm-hmm. and I was a fan. But the thing is, that might be a good business to <laughs> to start, huh? It sounds like it. But <laughs> so I work there. Yeah, as long as you have your mantras. As long as you have your exactly your froyo and your <laughs> mantras, and there you are. So you're happy. But um, in the middle of working there, I. I kept doing the mantras and the suggestions and the self-hypnosis or the, the affirmations. And and it's all the same thing. It's just an affirmation is a positive mantra that you're saying to yourself for something you want to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I'm saying this over and over again. And then I just got this idea. A light bulb came off after about two months of working there that I ding. want exactly. Ding. Here it is. The universe guided me to do this. And I programmed it myself. Mm. And so I'm in control. And what it was, was I wanted to start a vending machine business. I always did since I was a kid, right? To have like these machines. I was fascinated with them. And I always wanted to have no, my either my own You just wanted the snacks. Well, partly. <laughs> but I was fascinated with, you know, having an arcade business or something where people coin operated for some reason. So I decided to do it. And I got a loan. And I went out, and I did, which I would never do before, by the way. I would never think. I would think I don't have the money. I can't do it. I can't afford it. That that was my thinking. That was my poverty thinking. So I thought, no, I can get a loan, and I can do this. And I did it. I went out, and and it was just funny because I went on Craigslist and I saw an ad for I don't know if the universe timed this perfectly or what, but I got a really good deal on a route. And I went out and I got all these good locations. Like I taught me everything and I did it and it was successful and I did it for a few years and I actually funded my um, time at HMI or Hypnosis Motivational Institute when I was learning, you know, hypnosis there. I I funded my gas. I funded my, my you know, expenses, eating, food. Everything was covered. Textbooks were covered through, you know, the business that I started through the affirmations, through the nice. mantras. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So... And I ended up in India, too, after that. I mean, so, so many doors opened up for me that were closed before. Wow. Oh, okay. So it's like one thing just... Led to it. It, it snowballed, yeah. it sounds it snowballed. like. snowballed. Like, and then they teach you, too, which here's a pitfall. Snowball of goodness. It was a snowball of goodness. It was like <laughs> a, a, a snowball of menchies all in my experience. Mm-hmm. So, um, but the thing is, is they say, the metaphysical masters say, do not forget the tools that got you the abundance when you get it. Because when you get the abundance, you for, you say, oh, forget this tool now. I don't need it anymore. Yeah, that's right. And that happened to me. Yeah, that makes sense. And okay. and then my life, um, certain things didn't move forward that should have because I lost the snowball oh. momentum. And then my snowball was melting. It was turning <laughs> oh. into hell. So, so, 
So I realized I made that mistake. I went in the pitfall, and mm -hmm. it's probably to learn so I could teach it to you, to other people, so they don't do that. Really listen to that. Once you get to where you are, it's kind of like, you know, they say, oh, you know, you only pray when you're sick and you need God to help you. But as soon yeah. as he's given you everything you asked for, you're like, oh, forget God, I don't yeah, need him exactly. anymore. Exactly. And that's, that's like saying the same thing. You're turning your back on the process and the tools and the sacred art of how you manifested your dream. You should live every day manifesting by the power of uh, law of attraction, by your thoughts, your reality. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts create your reality. And the Pleiadians, which are, are, are channeled by um, the best channel for the Pleiadians was Barbara Marciniak. And you can check out her books. She totally connected with... I believe the collective consciousness of the Pleiadians and they're like a future alien race as they're called from here of us but they're just versions of ourselves and they've come back to help us and one of the advanced tools that they use are basically mantras but they don't say mantras they just say that your thoughts control your reality and they're trying to teach us that in so many ways that literally thoughts create your reality and time has sped up Mm -hmm. So what used to take forever, and this is why the law of attraction, by the way, has boomed so far. You have The Secret that came out, and everybody oh, it's I become mainstream. That. Yeah. I didn't read it, though. Yeah, I mean, I've read it, and it's kind of all about material and basic stuff, but okay. it works. Mm -hmm. And um, well, the reason why it actually took off, because there's been many books by Napoleon Hill and other people that have created books that are about the law of attraction that never went anywhere. But the reason why those secret, secret went big is, well, one, marketing and, and financial backing. But also another reason that the law of attraction is very popular now is time has sped up. Mm. So time has accelerated. And the Pleiadians talked that, about that as well, where their example was that, you know, before in, in the 80s and even in the, starting from the 50s, you could think a thought and you can drive down the highway with your ice cream sundae and nothing would happen. But now when you think about a thought, you bump into it in the other room. Kind of like, your, I remember you telling me your story about your son when you guys were watching TV and you're telling about all these uh, synchronicities that were happening to mm -hmm. you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I would talk about something and then it would be on TV. <laughs> or and I could your son, be talking your son, about by the way, doesn't, and it would... Her son does not believe in any oh, of this no, stuff, Oh, no, 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 not at all. No, no, he's a nerdy kid with glasses. I mean, he's every, very scientific. Everything's just fact, fact, fact. He does not believe in, I don't know, spiritual stuff or... Right, and so for him to... To acknowledge <laughs> and see mm -hmm. what you're saying and saying, stop it, mom. Like, that's too much. <laughs> that's just crazy for him to experience. Yeah, it's even he, yeah, he that, noticed like, that. It was hilarious. It, it, yeah, a complete <laughs> skeptic is seeing the effects of law of, of attraction very quickly happen to you. So well, he just witness. calls it coincidences, coincidences, although they got a little ridiculous. Right, see, but they got so that. ridiculous. But he that, still called them um, um, coincidences. But, but he's in denial. <laughs> so, because he doesn't believe when you when you have a, when you shut down on the belief, I mean, you have to go into denial, I guess. But that is what's happening. That's the way the universe works, and it's scientific. Like I said, Einstein talked about everything being vibration. So if you vibe on the same vibe, that's why people say that. Oh, those surfer guys. Oh, dude, you're on the same vibe as me, man. Mm -hmm. Like we're on the same right. wavelength, bro. Like we're on the same thing because they feel like that, and they know that they f they're in tune with their feelings, so they they can feel when another person. Can you make it click. something bigger? Because my coincidences so far it's not anything that's really paying off it's just it's because it's because you need to feed your subconscious bank or as john Kappas would say the founder of hmi the mental bank concept you need to feed your subconscious this stuff so it comes out and gives you that they, they say that the successful uh, they say an alcoholic Mm -hmm. is not a failure because they teach you that, oh, the, uh, you, I was what? an alcoholic and you're a failure. What they teach is that he's a successful alcoholic. So if you <laughs> if you reprogram that same person to be like, I'm going to be a businessman, right. he would be a successful businessman. Oh, yeah, I feel like that all the time. Like I tell my kids, you know what? If you spent as much time <laughs> on the computer. No, wait, wait, switch that. I was, I was if you spend say. more time than on the computer. Yeah, if you okay, if you spent as much time on homework as you do on the computer, right. oh my gosh, you would get straight A's. Right. Yeah. So that's the idea of that. It's like right focus is that there it is again in Buddhism. They talk about right focus, focusing on the right things. But from and I and my quote is or what I say to everybody is if you don't have focus, you don't have anything. And so to get focus, though, which a lot of people are ADHD, Lucas? ADD, <laughs> locus, can't focus. <laughs> 
So it's you Sorry, need, you I need have some that song hocus in my pocus. head again. <laughs> well, you need some hocus pocus for the locust to go away. And what what the the hocus pocus is is the mantra. That's where the tool, the mantra, comes in okay. to retrain or reprogram your mind. Okay. So and there's different types of mantras. Oh yeah. So, okay. What kind of mantras would I want to say? I, okay. Are there different types of mantras that I would want to say? Let's say. I want to make more money, or I want a boyfriend. I want, I don't know. Yeah. Do they work like that? Yeah, they or? do kind of work like that. And there is different types of mantras. There's the ancient mantras that holds that old vibration. Like I said, it imprints your consciousness. And, and that would be something like um, what's recommended for everybody to say is the Om Namah Shivaya mantra, which what? goes, <laughs> Om. <laughs> well, what you say is, is Om. Om. The popular Om, which is Alpha and Omega. That was the first word that was utter, ever all about. <laughs> the first syllable that was ever uttered is Om. Om. Yeah. And it's pronounced like A-U-M, like Om, like that. So it's Om. Om. <laughs> om. But you could just do Om. It doesn't matter. Om, om. Like that. Okay. And then you say Namaha. 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 Uh-huh. And then you say Shivaya. or sh It's for Shiva, but you say Shivaya. 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 Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah, Shivaya. Shivaya. Shivaya, yeah. Shivaya. I, I, it, you did it I right. feel like I'm learning a different language. It is a different language. It's Sanskrit. Does it's it it, have... It's the original root language. And so, that's why it's so powerful, because it holds the original vibrations. Does it have a meaning? And Yes. So the, when you say Om and Alpha and Omega... So it translates to English? Yes. yes. When you're saying Om... Yeah. And you don't repeat Om over and over again if you want to manifest <laughs> a new car or, or new material things because it makes you more connected with the spirit divine instead of the material world. So you're oh. actually disconnecting from the material world. So actually, a bunch of people saying Om all the time and they want to collect money, it's not going to really work out to you f too well. Mm. Okay, And that's the contradiction that people do and they don't understand. Mm, and that's okay. why a lot of noobs or people that think they're all spiritual teachers are teaching people this, they're teaching the wrong information. So the real information is that if you want to become more spiritually inclined, repeat OM. Mm. But that's why I'm also saying this, but it's also protection. So when you say OM NAMAHA, you're saying Namaha. Om Namaha. Alpha and Omega are an infinity. OM NAMAHA praises basically to the most high god shiva which shiva is inside of you also so you're saying praise to your higher self with with which is god within you and within everybody else so you're saying om namaha shivaya om namaha, namaha shivaya. shivaya and you can say it more in like a, a song type of way or like singing so you could say you do it like yeah so you say om namaha shivaya Om Namaha Shivaya Om Namaha Shivaya Om Namaha Shivaya Have you ever thought about singing? I have actually. Oh, nice. I thought about it. Okay. I don't do it, but I've thought yeah. about it. And I have written a I few think that songs. you should make a song. I could make you a know, song. You know, you should make a maybe song for for an intro for this podcast. I could maybe. I could do that. But yeah, then if I do the Om Namaha Shivaya, then everybody yeah, th will become broke. That's your broke. homework now. But everybody will become broke after they listen to my podcast. Why? So, <laughs> because because the Om takes them out of the physical and into the spiritual. So I, I would want to do one that's a little more universal. Um, what do you mean? Maybe I'll make a CD of it. Of what? Of the Om Namaha Shivaya and these other oh. mantras. Or maybe I can make ones for success. No, I just wanted you to make a, a song. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe it'll make the whole world more spiritual because I think we need that. We're a little too material in the Western society, I believe. Okay. But, I think um, you missed your calling. But I might right. have. I yeah. might have. But there's still help. There's still time. Okay. <laughs> I can use the mantras to motivate me because <laughs> it's also used for motivation. So like in my story about manifesting that business... Um, doing the vending machine business, mm -hmm. it also motivated me to get on Craigslist and look around and take the action to do it. Right, exactly. So yeah. when you program your subconscious with these things, it all also not only opens the doors, but it makes you open to receiving these things in your life and s so you can oh, yeah. recognize the opportunity. And not only that, it gives you the motivation to go and do it. I think that's that's a lot of people's problems. It is. R right? Yeah, I mean, demotivated. Everybody is so used just to going to a job, you know, and maybe something they're not even happy with, and they don't even think of 
starting their own business or doing something else, or maybe they thought about it, but they don't have the motivation right. just to go and do well, it, because you know, take the, action. The job that they're going in also, if they do want to get out of it, could be a negative form of hypnosis or mantras because yeah. you could receive, if a boss always tells you, this isn't good enough, you need to have this on the table by 9 a.m. and it's not and blah, 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 and I need this faster, then you get the message that you're not good enough and that gives, shakes your comp- confidence it makes you go crazy so that you don't go out there into the world and, and make your own pathway and you believe you're not good enough to do that because you, you're you being told all the time that you're not, which is a negative form of mantras. So when you're telling me why isn't the mind, or you're asking me, why isn't the mind naturally already positive? It's trauma, but also because the world we live in gives you and feeds you so many negative messages and advertisers tell you you're not good enough and you need this. You only deserve it if you... you are a millionaire or you're 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 beautiful in this in this bodily way that we show you is acceptable exactly you know what i got to stop reading the rob report well there you so. go <laughs> which is for rich makes people feel, by the way makes me feel bad every time i look look at one of those but and that's then their I go, tactic oh, i'll they show never you on be TV. able to have that right they show you on tv <laughs> so. oh this is how the um you know a Bugatti is made and blah, 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 blah. blah. It's like, why do I care how the Bugatti is made? Yeah. I'll never afford one or drive one. So it's like, that's cool and neat, I, but you keep telling me, you know, that I that? should have this Bugatti, which is a really nice car, like oh, an Italian. I don't, even, I don't know anything about cars. It's like a cars. Lamborghini. So you have, oh, the Lamborghini. It's like, I'm going to have a Lamborghini. No, it's basically saying everyone everyone could afford a Bugatti mm-hmm. or a Lamborghini, but you, you know. I just know the basic cars. Right. Ford, Toyota. That's all you need to know. Mercedes and BMW. And if you, I mean, if you I, drive, I don't really know. if you drive a nice car, that's fine. But the, the, I'm just, I'm just exposing the advertising tactics of television and these other forms of programming. So, all in all, um, to tie it all together, it's basically a tool for your mind mm-hmm. to help you get control of your mind, and also for the law of attraction. Which, like I said earlier, you could I- say insert here. So, if you want to, you know, manifest something, mm-hmm. you can make a suggestion like. Um, I I feel like a million dollars because I'm worth it, because I have value. I feel like a million dollars today because I have value and I have many talents. And you could keep saying this over and over again. And the reason why you want to say feel is because what you feel is your vibration and that's what you attract, not what you want. So if you say, oh, I want this car, and you keep saying, I- I have, I'm going to have this car, I have this car, or whatever you're saying, I have this car. Your subconscious keeps saying, no, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't, I know you don't because it's not outside and you don't vibrationally connect and feel it. But if you say, I am wealthy, I feel wealthy, I feel like a million dollars, when you say I am, you are that state, and when and you have to truly believe it. Or if you don't, be, if you can't get your head around, wrap your head around believing it like that, the easier form is just saying I feel like a million dollars. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm worth it. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to manifest something really great real soon, and I, I just feel it. And when you keep saying you feel it, you will feel it. And when you feel it, it'll happen because you'll be on that vibrational frequency for it too. To nice. So. Okay. Okay. And then where do I go? Let's say. Um, See, I already forgot that Om ma- Mantra. <laughs> Om Namah <laughs> so, Shivaya. Which so where where can I go find that if I wanted to look up mantras? Is there something? Well, you can look up um, one mantra I would recommend looking up is the mm-hmm. Ga- Gayatri Mantra, which is spelled G-A-Y, <laughs> like happy, like the mm-hmm. old gay meant happy. Mm-hmm. And tree, so it's like the mantra. So it's Gayatri, which mantra, which is the great mantra. So it means really the great mantra and it's the maha gayatri mantra because maha means great in why don't you make an ebook Sanskrit. yeah i'm making an ebook I'm, oh. I'm currently putting together the different mantras so that people can find it oh nice okay so they don't have to go all around and, and remember these things and find these things and I, i'm going to list what they do too so you could see oh that's what the gayatri one is doing and it's totally free i'm not going to make anybody pay for it because i feel like this information should be out there and needs to get to the public because it will really change the world if everybody started doing this People would be like Christmas time all the time when you go to the grocery <laughs> store and everybody's smiling and that seasonal chair could be year round. Mm-hmm. And people will be getting what they want instead of what they feel they don't deserve deep down. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. So okay. that wraps it up for tonight with PLR, with Pure Light Radio, with Destiny. Thank okay. you very much for joining us. Okay. And have a wonderful rest of your evening or day. Bye. Bye.